Welcome to Franklin Almanac. I'm Polixeni Manjari. Thank you for joining us for our second edition of Almanac, a compendium of life in Franklin. We'll bring you important stories. What's happened, what's happening, what matters. As promised last time, we made sure to keep our New Year's resolution and bring you the greatest and most feel-good stories to start off the new year right. We begin with our first story. In Massachusetts, our homeless population persists. In fact, Forbes has our state listed among the top 10 with the highest homeless population. Over 21,000 without homes across the state. Over 7,000 in Boston alone. Over the years, this problem hasn't gone away. Instead, it has grown. So how do we help those impacted and prevent future homelessness? Founders of the Make Change for Change organization, Corey and Courtney Napa, have a plan. Make Change for Change, MCFC, is a public charity here in Franklin geared towards erasing homelessness. Corey and Courtney, along with their three kids, have a goal to provide permanent housing for our homeless. They believe that children are the foundation of our future, and in order to help children, they first must provide parents with the opportunity to give their children a better life. I sat down with Corey, Courtney, and their board of advisors to discuss their mission. Tell me a little bit about your mission statement and how you're able to make this happen with the organization. On the hope component, what we do with that is we want to try to, like, um, Rosie's Place. We'll do the Valentine's every year, um, you know, at, the, at their dinner. Um, Horizons, we're doing the, the gingerbread men and the gingerbread houses. Um, the Backpack Brigade, which we launched this year, we did 100 backpacks. A lot of them went to St. Francis, but went to Boston Common and we were handing them out to people that were actually homeless in, in the street. So we're connecting with these people because you're not, it's not like everyone is just panhandling and begging. Some of them don't want your help. So now you need to try to get to know them, you need to build relationships, so you need consistency. So to get consistency, we formulated our plan, which is <clears throat> beneath our mission, mission statement of just the hope. The hope's the hope, the help's the help. We need to get to know them to help them. They, we need to get them to have mailboxes so that we can find them, so that the, everyone can find them, so that subsidies can find them, so that care can find them, and then eventually homes. Eventually they need a place to be, either because they got enough help and they can figure it out on their own, or because we provided something in the housing component. So it's, you know, so it's hope, help, homes. With the new year ahead of you guys, what are you planning to accomplish? What is your hope for the organization this coming year? Well, I mean, we're just kind of kicking off and getting organized. We do know one thing is that we've one of the things that we learned um, from reaching out and trying to communicate with other charities that are working on fighting homelessness. It was a seemed simple, but until I heard it, I didn't fully get it. They said one of the biggest problems is if you're homeless is if you get wet. How do you get dry? The April showers brigade staying warm is going to be a little bit more of a of lofty goal for the backpack because one of the items we want to include are you know brand new water resistant boots. So we're going to need 200 of them. So you know it starts to get to the so we're going to want ponchos, umbrellas, all different things that can try to help people at least fight off or stay dry. Getting if they get wet again, that's where we need to get to the build up to the home part. But how can we help try try to be prevented preventative to getting wet? Joining us now is Rick and Nice, who is on the board of advisors. So tell me how you got involved with the organization. What inspired you? Um, well, I give 10% of my commissions to local charities. Um, I found them, I think, through social media. Uh, I talked with Corey, and I was able to help them out with the Backpack Brigade, buy some items and things like that. They do things directly with the the homeless population. Um, they are out there on the streets, you know, where we were meeting with people, we were talking with them, and, you know, they want to not only just give them help, but they also want to um, offer services and, you know, find things that, that these people can can actually grab onto and have help, help themselves. With us now is another Board of Advisors member, Nicole Corliss, and her daughter, Sophia. So tell me a little bit about why you joined the organization. I joined because my husband and I, our children, um, have a blended family between us, and our children each have two homes, so I thought it was important to expose them that not everybody has what they have, and that they're very lucky to each have two homes where some people have none. So that's why I thought it was important to get involved. Well, what's your favorite part about being involved in the organization? 
Probably just being knowing that I'm helping out people and that I can make people smile and make a difference. If you are interested in donating items for their April Brigade or simply giving back, please visit www.gofundme.com slash make change the number four change. As Americans, we spend more time pleasing others than we do ourselves. But have you ever stopped to think, am I truly happy? Ron DeBona, an English teacher and creator of the 40% Club, had the same thought. In just three weeks, he was able to bring together over 50 Franklin High School students to participate in events that bring happiness to fellow students and citizens all over Franklin. I visited the high school to speak with Mr. DeBona, Principal Perry, and club members about their good deeds. Here's a look at what the 40% is all about. I am visiting the Franklin High School to talk to some freshmen about the new club, the 40%. We want to be able to spread our message, not just and keep it for our school. We want other kids to be able to feel happy, and we want to be the people that almost started it. Yeah, like what she said, our next priority is on Valentine's Day, going to the senior um, center and making them happy and interacting with them and doing games. And so they're like not lonely that day, and they can spread the joy. Have you heard any feedback regarding the club? What are people saying about it? Um, I know a lot of people noticed the, one of the first things we did this year, uh, we stood outside the school and greeted people on a Monday morning kind of to cheer up their day and make it go a little better than maybe it would have otherwise. And we handed out stickers and blue bubbles and played happy music. So I think a lot of people had positive feedback on that and said it really improved their day. It's nice to like show t teachers and you know people who work here that they are like well liked and we do appreciate them even though we might not say it all the time. <laughs> the idea of the club is that you have to look at things in a way that makes you happier. And so I think just thinking about that more often in a setting with a lot of other people makes it a lot easier to enact that in other parts of your life. I think uh, Mr. D, our advisor, is really preparing us to be more happy and realize that things might go wrong sometimes, but it, that's okay and, you know, there's ways to fix that. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to join the 40%. Franklin's already a great and happy place, but there can always be more smiles. It's also really nice to be able to improve ourselves, not just the community. So that's a really big takeaway for me. And last but not least, we have English teacher and creator of the club, the 40%. Ron DeBona. I want to know what inspired the 40%. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this summer I decided to investigate happiness on my own. Uh, so I spent many uh, mornings on my porch reading various texts on happiness. Uh, the one that really pushed it is Happier uh, by, I think, uh, Tal Ben Shahar. It's the number one course taught at, or at least requested, at Harvard. Uh, and so I read that. And I started to think about my own happiness level and was I as happy as I thought I would have been at this point in my life. So the first day back, I saw a couple of my seniors in the hallway and I just said, hey, would you guys be interested in helping me start a happiness club at the high school? I said, if so, uh, be at my room um, Friday at 2.30. And I had 30 kids show up at, at my door. And I'm telling you, just the best kids in the world. And I said, yes, this is the thing. This is going to be great. Tell me a little bit about the happiness study. I know I read about that a little bit, um, and I know it influenced the name of the club. According to all the books I've read, 50% uh, of your happiness level is basically genetics. You know, some people are just born with a higher baseline of happiness. 10% is life circumstances that you really can't control. Uh, if you get a speeding ticket, you're not going to be in the best of moods. If you fail a geometry quiz, you're, you know, your, your mood is going to wane. But 40% is really something that we can control by our perception. It's giving them more of a purpose uh, to get up every day. If your purpose is to make one person feel better about who they are, that's a, that you can lay your head down at the end of the night and say, I, I did something today. You know, I think we are selfishly becoming happier than everyone else in the school just because of all the fun we're having coming up with these ideas. I think it's uh, magical. I think it's been an incredible addition to our school, and, and we're always really working hard on culture and climate in a building, and uh, the school has really taken to it, and, and the students have been absolutely outstanding. Mr. DeBona has been absolutely incredible, and it's really been a great way to bring smiles to the faces of our students. What do you see as the future for the 40%? 
Yeah, I think the sky's the limit. I think their creativity continues to amaze me. Uh, they keep surprising us with things that they come up with, and we're sort of set up for these moments of happiness that we don't even know are coming. Uh, and they're really, really wonderful ways to start a day or end a day. And uh, I'm really excited for all they have to offer, and, and I'm happy to support them in any way that I can. The students of the 40% Club aspire to change the world one smile at a time. Next time you see these bright-eyed kids around Franklin, feel free to stop and say hi. Oh, and don't forget to smile. Since 1956, Milford's WMRC has been known as the station for advertisers, targeting an adult audience ranging in age from 35 to 64. For 61 years, Milford residents have tuned in to the AM station to listen to classic hits and local news from owner Tom McCulloch and his incredible staff. On January 12th at precisely 10.13 a.m., surrounded by close friends and family, WMRC launched 101.3 MyFM. We caught up with the crew to celebrate their exciting day. So tell us a little bit about WMRC. Well, WMRC actually went on the air in 1956, so we've been around for 60 years, um, and our focus is local. It's local news, weather, sports, traffic. Uh, it's anything going on in the local communities, uh, whether it's local events or fundraisers for charities. You know, we want to be a part of it. We're either reporting on it or uh, we're usually there live. So, uh, and, and the new MyFM 101.3 is just going to take it to the next level. Our music is classic hits, but if you like that music with... All the local stuff that's going on mixed in with it, you really only have one choice. That's exciting. Wonderful. So now, a lot of other stations out there, there's many, as you mentioned. What separates you from everybody else? We're so connected to the community. Uh, and like I say, whether it's helping a charity or, or carrying high school basketball and high school football, you know, the big guys aren't going to do that. Um, you know, this past year we did a radiothon for uh, the Oliva Fund at Milford Regional Medical Center and we raised $106,000 in one day. Um, that means everything to me. You know, that's what owning a local radio station means to me. It's giving back to the community, it's being connected, it's helping people when they need it, and um, this, this new FM signal is just gonna help us do even more. What are you hoping to accomplish in 2017? We're just gonna keep on doing what we're doing. Uh, you know, I, I really want to get out to all the surrounding towns and, and meet more people and introduce the station to them and, and let them know what a resource we can be. And um, it's kind of what we've always been, just on a little bit bigger scale. I'm taking a moment to speak to Matt Romling, the sports director at WMRC. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for spending a couple of minutes with us of today. Course. It's a lot of excitement down here. very exciting. It's pretty, it really is. So tell us a little bit about your position here. Yeah, so um, as a sports director here, uh, we help coordinate with the sports staff. We do a ton of local programming. We have a lot of professional sports properties here, but really what we like to do is uh, do a lot of local community broadcasts as well, a lot okay. of local high schools. Uh, we do a lot with Milford. We do a lot with Franklin, with the Hockamock League in general, uh, Medway. Hopedale, Bellingham, Hopkinson, those are a lot of the schools uh, that we've been covering over the years for basketball, uh, for football, and for baseball. And then we host the weekly show on Saturdays, now right. from 11 to 1, where we have a ton of local guests in as well, um, local athletic directors, local players, and the community has been so great to us. What makes this radio station so special? Well, I think what makes this station special is it's one of the very few radio stations left in the state, if not in the country, that is locally independent and centers on local community, what the community does. We stay involved with all the 14 towns that we cover okay. and try to stay you know, on top of things so that we can bring uh, you know, information to our listeners mm -hmm. and to residents of those communities so they, they stay in tune as well. With the new year now, uh, what, are you, what are your summer goals for 2017? To be able to just you know, solidify our, our, our position right where we are, which we're pretty strong. We're in a nice spot because we've got uh, Boston to our east, we've got Providence to our south, we've got Worcester to our north. We're right in the middle here, and with a big, strong FM signal now, I think we'll draw a lot more listeners. Ten, nine, eight, eight seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Kaboom! <laughs> 
Don't forget to tune into 101.3 My FM for your favorite classic hits and personalities. We wish Tom and his staff all the best as they embark on this wonderful journey. Many know and love Franklin, a town filled with history, rich education, and friendly people. But did you know that Franklin now has its very own official theme song? Town resident music teacher and composer Jamie Barrett joined us in studio to talk about his song, The City Known as the Town of Franklin, while Franklin TV's own Chris Flynn discussed the making of the music video. Thank you so much, Jamie and Chris, for joining us today. My pleasure. Uh, so we want to talk to you a little bit about your new song, The City Known as the Town of Franklin. So to begin, I just wanted to know right off the bat, how did you get into music? I played clarinet mm -hmm. and still play clarinet and played it all through my life. And my brothers played brass instruments, various brass instruments. And, and we all gathered around the piano and played our instruments along with my mom and, and sang. And, and my dad plays a mean stereo. <laughs> He's the non-musical member, but he he appreciates music, and he turned me on to a lot of great, you know, Beethoven, Bach, Beethoven, the Beatles. So, so you kind of grew up around it. I grew up around it, yeah. So I love, love music. And, you know, then I discovered the guitar, and there was just no turning back. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and then, yeah, and it's just, I live and breathe music, so. But, but I got into it just through my family. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So we'd love to know, you know, what inspired you to write the song? You know, how did how did this come about? I know it is Franklin's new theme song, so that's very exciting. Yeah. But what inspired it? Okay, so actually, it's not. Truth be told, it's not so new, and it has been around for about ten years. Oh, and we're marking really? about the tenth anniversary. Oh, wow. Two thousand okay. two thousand six, and it actually, I think a lot of people, uh, it's uh, it's. Um, they think it's new, but it's yeah. actually been around. I'm a school teacher mm -hmm. in town, and uh, one of the teachers came up and asked if I, you know, they knew I liked to write songs and said, would you write a song for our second graders who are learning about the town of Franklin? Oh, great. Yeah, that's smart. I said, smart. sure. Yeah. I said, anything in particular you'd like me to include? The library. Okay, got it. <laughs> the the red brick schoolhouse. You got it. Um, Horace Mann. Okay, I'll toss them in, you know. Yeah. So I was like, all right. And so these are some of the key things that I want in the song. And I was like, all right. You got it. And so I went home, and, and actually the song came together in about five minutes. Wow. Uh, had I known it was going to become the theme song, you know, I would have <laughs> probably spent ten minutes on it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it came right to, you know, picked up the guitar and was like, okay, there we go. The city knows the town of Franklin. So that was a line I got from the teacher, too, that, you know, they, okay. were, they were learning about Franklin, and they realized that Franklin is unique in that it's a town, but yet it's run like a city. So it's the city known as the town of Franklin. I did have a chance to watch a music video, and I loved it. It was mm. awesome. Um, I noticed that a few of the areas that you included were, as you mentioned, Horace Mann Square, the library, um, and downtown Franklin, um, among many other things. So I know that you mentioned a few other people had influence as to what they wanted in the video. How else did you decide to include some of those things that you did in the video? Let's be clear. I wrote the song. This gentleman here, <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman here, made, created an awesome video. Yes. He, he had to have listened to the song, and heard what was in there. And I mean, it's like he was he he captured it. And I've heard lots of great uh, comments. I think comments. he's giving me a little too much credit. Yes, yeah, so let's turn it to you, Chris. <laughs> so tell us the process of filming the video. How did you decide? You know the elements of the video. When I was uh, reading through the uh, Town of Franklin's Wikipedia page, that's okay. how I found out. That's how I found out that the song was actually. Yeah, I found the, it on there too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how I found out that the song was the was the official song for right. the town. And so I thought it'd be a fun project to try to do a music video for the song. Right. There was an animated an animated video for it. Um, but an animated video. An animated video. Yeah, and, okay. and Jamie can talk a little bit more about awesome. that. But um, uh, I. I just ran it by him the idea of doing a live action video for it, and that's pretty much what started the whole thing. Mm -hmm. As far as the content for the video mm -hmm. was concerned, a lot of the content was, for the most part, dictated by what was mentioned in in the okay. song. Three big things that were dictated by the song uh, started off with the front, the, front of the library, the, the red brick school, the commons. Uh, those those particular spots in town ha had to be featured in it. Right. The rest of it is pretty much um, just saying how much of the uh, important stuff that I could that I could fit in within like a three minute uh, right exactly. a three minute Short. time frame, yeah. which which is much harder than it looks. Trust right. me. So I do want to ask um, in the video, I noticed that you started and ended in downtown Franklin. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose downtown Franklin? In a lot of ways, 
that's where Franklin Franklin culture is centered on. A, okay. lo- a lot of, a lot of different events happen in the downtown area. So um, for so for artistic reasons, I decided to start start it off. Uh, um, in the uh, in the downtown area. So I want to get back to you. Tell yeah. us about this animated version. Oh sure. Um, <laughs> I've never so, seen this, so I'm curious. So, yeah, to know. I walked into Mel, uh, Maldivas, and there was artwork up by this local artist Debbie Rohrbach mm-hmm. of downtown Fra- of Franklin images uh, that she had painted, and I was like, there we go. That's it. There's my artist. Wow. And I, I didn't know who she was. I reached out to Debbie and said, Debbie, I, I wrote the song. Would you be interested in making a, uh, a children's book? of this song. Oh, so okay. we made a children's book um, of this, which you can get through Barnes & Noble. We made a children's book of the song. And then what Chris is talking about, the video, the animated video, I just took the images from the book and just put those, oh. and put it into the video. Oh, that's smart. And just put her images into the into the video. So there is a children's book out there. It's through Barnes & Noble, the, uh, the city known as the town of Franklin, um, and then made a video of it. But then I was, and then it just kind of has, I don't know, <laughs> off to the side and, yeah. you know, just as things do. And just, and then when Chris reached out to me about this, I was like, absolutely. This is like, <laughs> this is, this is awesome. Yeah. This is great. And what a relief to see the finished product. I had to make sure that I covered my bases as, right. as far as like Jamie was concerned because, mm-hmm. um, I had I had to make sure that I got him covering. Uh, we we cover we covered the song in in three different in three different ways. At okay. one time, as we mentioned on on the uh, in the in the downtown area, right right, right in front of uh, right in front of the down, where the downtown partnership is actually located. Yes. We did the first ver- we did the whole first verse of the song down there. Okay. We, we shot it like three three different ways so that we so that we covered ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's that's essentially what you do in any kind of indie film in indie film production. Okay. We then went down to the library, which is again one of the other featured um, locations in the song. Mm-hmm. And again, we did we did the same thing. We um, I I cover I recorded Jamie in a in a in a few different ways doing the the portion of the song that ta- that actually specifically talks about the library. library. And the same thing with both the town common and with the uh, re- with the Red Bear School. Yes. So. Um, so I had to make sure that I had as much about about Jamie actually singing the song exactly as as we did with uh, act- with actual uh, spots around town. So. Wonderful. Now, did you guys collaborate on the idea of how the music video would work, or was that mainly your idea? Uh, <laughs> song, well, was, song was done. I I let all the yeah. That's all him. <laughs> the, the video. It's it started with this guy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, it was done in a, it was done in a largely imp- improvised fashion. Once we once I figured out what um, what locations would be uh, best for the video, we just we just talked about it coming coming down to uh, downtown on on a specific day. I know this is our first song and music video that I've seen from you, but can we mm. expect any more? Oh yeah. Soon? Oh yeah. I know that uh, your music video has almost 2,000 views on YouTube. That's fantastic. So congratulations. On so, I've seen, so I've seen on YouTube. Exactly. I, I, I check, I'm sure there'll be more to come. Then. <laughs> so if you guys should. want to uh, check it out, make sure to go onto YouTube and you can find the city known as the town of Franklin and make sure you check out their theme song because it's awesome. So thank you so much for joining us, Jamie and Chris. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. We have finally welcomed the new year, full of new experiences that have never been. New year, new you. Sound familiar? Millions of people have already made their New Year's resolutions and are motivated and committed. Yet by the end of the month, many of those lofty resolutions have come and gone. Did you know that on average, 73% fail to realize their New Year's goals? Why put so much pressure on yourself? Whether you've already accomplished your resolution or you're struggling to find the motivation, take a moment to remember one thing. You have 365 days to set goals, even small, easy goals, and 365 opportunities to revisit your resolution. Because just as this is a new year, every day is a new day. So many resolutions are focused on changing yourself physically to become a better you. But this year, I encourage you to practice self-acceptance instead and focus on improving the inside rather than the outside. Actor Cyril Cusack once said, If you ask me for my New Year's resolution, it would be to find out who I am. Happiness begins when you are able to fully embrace who you really are. And when you do, you might just find that 2017 could be your best year yet.
This wraps up our second edition of Franklin Almanac. As we continue to bring you more stories, we always love to hear from you. Just email us at almanac at franklin.tv and let us know what you're interested in. Who knows? Your idea might be on our next episode. We look forward to seeing you again soon. For Franklin Almanac, I'm Polixeni Manjari. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.